Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Dear friends in Christ, in this video we are going to reflect on the topic purgatory. Well, first let us understand what is purgatory. Well, at the moment of death, there are many souls who die in the state of grace, but they have not completely made satisfaction for their sins, nor have they attained the degree of holiness or purity necessary to enjoy the vision of God. In the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 27 we read that nothing defiled can enter heaven. So until and unless the souls are not completely purified of their sins, they are kept in a place for purging. They purge for their sins with the help of the prayers of the faithful on earth. So this place, the church has termed it as purgatory. It's a purging place or you can say it's a condition of a soul undergoing purification before it enters heaven. So purgatory is just like a prison cell. Just as a prisoner who commits crime is imprisoned and he has to remain under bars until his imprisonment term is not completed. In the same way, purgatory is a prison cell or you can say a purging place for the souls to purge for their sins completely before they enter into the glory of God. Do you pray fervently for the holy souls in purgatory? The one holy catholic and apostolic church of God is composed of three parts the militant church, the triumphant church and the suffering church. This triple church is called the mystical body of Christ or the kingdom of God. Purgatory is a province of this vast kingdom of God. Just like the earthly militant church and the heavenly triumphant church. The church teaches as dogma of faith that there is purgatory. The three sister churches have constant communication with each other called the communion of saints and the purpose is to lead souls to heaven. God has placed in our hands, that is, the members of the militant church, the key to this mysterious prison called purgatory and it is the prayer for the dead. We read in the second book of Maccabees chapter 12 verses 42 to 45 that it is a holy and awesome thought to pray for the dead that they may be loosed from sin. The Council of Trent speaks of three hells. First, it is a dark dungeon where the damned are tormented by evil spirits and a terrible fire which never ceases. The second type of hell is that which contains the purifying fires of purgatory. We profess in the Apostles' Creed that Jesus Christ descended into hell. This place contained the souls of the saints who died before the coming of Jesus. They enjoyed peace and hoped for redemption. They were in Abraham's bosom. When Jesus descended into hell, his brilliant presence brought infinite joy to those waiting souls, which is the vision of God. That day the promise of Jesus to the good thief was fulfilled. This day you will be with me in paradise. Now let us see what torments the souls suffer in purgatory. What does the fire of purgatory purify? The doctors of the church say that the fires of purgatory purify the stains left by our sins. The stains of sins plus the vision of God are places an obstacle to union with God. The fathers and doctors of the church agree that there is the upper purgatory which is for particular cases where the souls suffer little except the pain of loss of God's vision and they are looking forward to their deliverance. There is the lower purgatory which is for the general souls. Saint Francis, Saint Lidvina, Saint Bridget 
and Saint Magdalen who were permitted to see purgatory tell us about the various torments in different compartments. There were souls who were hypocrites in life, who were enslaved by a life of lies, who were slaves of luxury and the vanities of the world, were negligent, lacked fervor and piety in receiving Holy Communion, were irreverent in prayer, souls who were guilty of ingratitude towards God, others who sinned by avarice, who were impatient, still others had to expiate the numerous sins of their youth. The souls were in different compartments, some were in a vast burning sea of flames, others in a dungeon of ice, in a huge vessel of boiling oil, in a pond of melting iron metal, some were pierced with sharp swords, the tongue of one was transpierced by iron pins because of gossip and uncharitable talk. A couple was tortured by cigarettes and cigars because they had a tobacco business and had thus harmed many people. An advocate was tortured by pens, ink and paper because he drew up illegal deeds and was also forced to hold gambling cards in his hand because he had a passion for gambling. A priest whose fingers were eaten away by frightful hulses was punished in this way for having made the sign of the cross at the altar without any seriousness. We read in the Book of Wisdom, chapter 11, verses 17, By what means a man sinneth, by the same also is he tormented. There is a double pain in purgatory. First, the pain of sense which I described just now about the different torments in purgatory and second the pain of loss which consists in being deprived for a time of the vision of God who is the supreme good. The souls in purgatory are so completely resigned to God's will in suffering that if heaven was open to them to enter they would jump into hell rather than appear before God with the stains that disfigure them. They undergo purification willingly and lovingly because they know that it pleases divine justice. What help can we give to the holy souls in purgatory? First, the holy sacrifice of the Mass is the most efficacious means for assisting the holy souls and also to our advantage. Second, the Holy Rosary Prayer is another excellent source of so many graces for the living and for releasing the holy souls. Saint Annibal Mary de Francia revealed that when we recite Our Lady's Rosary for a soul in purgatory, that soul feels that the fires all about it are diminished and it experiences a heavenly relief. We can also help the holy souls by praying the powerful prayer which Saint Gertrude used to pray, by which our Lord showed our thousands of souls leaving purgatory and going to heaven. The beautiful prayer reads like this, Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. Saint Gertrude said that the holy souls in purgatory are our friends. If everyone had to adopt a holy soul to pray for, purgatory would be emptied in no time. We can also help the holy souls in purgatory by making the heroic act. It consists in surrendering or donating for the release of the holy souls all the indulgences gained by our prayers, sacrifices, good works of each day, without reserving anything to discharge our own debts. We deposit them in the hands of the Blessed Virgin Mary so that she may distribute them to those souls whom she desires to deliver from purgatory. It is wrong to think that one who donates or offers his or her prayers and good works for the poor souls thereby loses something for himself or herself. 
The Bible clearly says in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verses 7 that blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. What is donated is the satisfactory value of our works and not the merit for which there will be a degree of glory in heaven. Merit is strictly personal and cannot be transferred to another. Prayer in all its forms is another very efficacious means of relieving the holy souls and also to our advantage. Another way of helping the holy souls in purgatory is through our fasting, penance and mortification. Even all our tribulations, all the contradiction of this life, even the smallest mortifications and sacrifices which we offer to Abba Father for love of Jesus on behalf of the holy souls. For example, when you are thirsty, refusing yourself a glass of water, it's a trifling thing but very efficacious. The pains of purgatory are greater than those on earth. We have a special duty to help our deceased parents and relatives, but Christian charity commands us to pray for all the faithful departed in general, because they are all our neighbors, our brethren in Jesus Christ. Padre Pio had a special mission to pray for the souls in purgatory. He said, we must empty purgatory with our prayers. He further said, When we pray for the souls in purgatory, we will always get something back. Saint Faustina said, Only we can come to their aid. I asked the souls what their greatest suffering was. They answered me in one voice that their greatest torment was longing for God. So dear friends in Christ, let us not allow a day to pass without praying. praying for the souls in purgatory praying for the dead is considered as one of the spiritual work of mercy the more we show mercy by praying for the dead the more merciful will the lord be with us when we are in purgatory moreover the souls who are released from purgatory through the merits of our prayers will always be grateful to us and they will always pray for our well-being on earth so the more souls you release from purgatory the more intercessors you will have in front of the throne of god praying for you so let us cultivate this devotion to pray for the holy souls in purgatory